اعوذ باللہ السمیع العلیم من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و سلام علی المرسلین و صلی اللہ علی سیدنا و نبینا محمد و علی طیبین الطائر Dear brothers and esteemed sisters in Islam, through the help, special help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to offer you some sessions on Islamic child education and need for all families all around the world who try to stay Muslim. Alhamdulillah, thanks to God, we are rich enough in terms of teachings with regard child education, both in Quran and within the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the infallible Imams. We are happy and we are fortunate enough to be supported and to enjoy plenty of teachings, Islamic teachings, with regard to child education. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran reveals قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قو أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجار الله سبحانه وتعالى request us to keep to hold to support and to capture ourselves and our families, our relatives. It is recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that keep, hold yourself and your household from the fire, which when you enter, surprisingly, you will realize that the material in that fire is not normal material that we have seen and we have observed in this world. The very material of the hellfire in hereafter is totally and completely different from what we have seen in this world. The fire material in hereafter are people and are stones. The fire material for hellfire in hereafter are people and stones. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean by Gu anfusakum? Keep, protect, avoid yourself and your household from the hellfire. It could have different meanings. According to my humble understanding from this verse, I believe, I assume that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to keep and hold ourselves and our family or household from the fire, basically and initially it means education. It is a responsibility for the parents to keep and hold themselves and their household, meaningly wife and children. This is a responsibility. And I believe that in according to this concept, the concept of family responsibility, which stays on the shoulder of father and mother, 
امام علی ابن الحسین السجاد صلوات اللہ وسلم علیہ گفٹڈ اس ویت اٹریٹس اینڈ دیٹ ون ویری اسمال پیمفلیٹ اینڈ دیٹ ون ایز دی پیمفلیٹ آف رائٹس دی پیمفلیٹ آف رائٹس رسالت الحقوق The notebook of rights. Is it human rights? Is it rights with regard the natural resources? Is it uh, divine rights? Everything. The concept of rights in its very extended concept and meaning has developed by Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein in his notebook of rights, Risalat al-Hukuq. And Imam tries to provide us different rights and responsibility. As you may know, when we talk about rights, always, always, you know, you, we need to refer these rights to some responsibilities. Always rights stem from responsibilities. And I assume that when Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein as-Sajjad sallallahu alayhi talks about rights, it stems from the responsibilities. And that responsibility is well reflected In the Holy Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارًا Try to keep yourself and your family and your household from the hellfire that when you enter, you surprisingly realize that the fire material is totally different and What is the fire material? An-nas wal hijara. The careless people and the stones. So this is both a right from the side of our children and a responsibility from the side of ourselves to try our best to educate our children, to be the good future of Islam, to be the promising future of Islam. Islam. With regard to child education, Alhamdulillah, thanks to God, there are rich references and teachings within the Islamic references. And I could touch this topic, child education, from the dis- different angles. Number one, periodization of child education. This is the most important discussion and argument in child education. What do you mean by child education? How and through which approach? At the beginning, I need to tell you a fact that when someone talks about child education, we need to differentiate between three major concepts. So, conceptualization of child education begins with these categories, with this categorization. All specialists in education or all educationalists, when they talk about education, they say, they claim that child education could have three different phases or three different scopes or three different levels. Child rating, child training, and child education. 
child rearing, training, and education, or, or educating. There are plenty of narrations, both from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and from Ahlul Bayt, the infallible Imams, with regard the periodization of child education. And I told you, when you talk about child education, you need to be able to differentiate between three main concepts or three main levels, layers. Rating, training, educating. And educating stays at the age of 14 to 19. Before that, we could have education, but in a lower level, not in a higher level. So education in its real meaning begins from the age of seven. From the age of one to seven years old, we have rearing and training. If you refer to different narrations, and different verses in the Holy Quran with regard to child education, you will realize that child education from the age of one to seven is only rearing and training. When I talk about rearing and training, it means that there is no formal education. There is no formal teaching. There is no scheduled teaching from the age one to seven. And from 7 to 14 could be considered as the beginning of formal education in according to some prophetic and uh, imam's advices. And from 14 to 20, this is the period of uh, youthhood this is the formal higher education. If, for example, I want to provide you one concrete example from among the Islamic narrations, I would prefer to refer to this prophetic saying. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Al-waladu سيد سبع سنين وعبد سبع سنين ووزير سبع سنين Very beautiful and well organized levels and layers of responsibility, educational responsibility. As a parent, as a father, as a mother, if I want to try my best to educate my children in according to the Islamic teaching, I have to be careful about three levels. And this is interesting that these three levels and phases are periodized in terms of seven, seven, seven. So you may find out different period, periodization uh, in terms of age. But uh, when you talk about Islamic teachings, in Islam, education in its very vast concept is classified into three phases. Phase number one, rearing and training from age zero to seven. Phase number two, real formal education from seven to 14, and from 14 to 20, it's a formal higher education, not only in terms of uh, secular education, but also with regard to religious and moral education, which we could call it Islamic socialization. I will uh, clarify this point in my next session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.